Hi there and welcome to another of the DTA screencasts. In this session we're looking at biomechanics and primarily we're talking about levers. So we'll get started. So in our previous uh, screencast what we we'll are talking about were the principles behind Newton's laws, that's laws of motion, it's in relation to weight and resultant forces, resistance, stability. So go back over that previous screencast and review those components if you're not quite sure what those terms mean. But, so for this session, we're looking at the lever system and it's the coordination of our body and it's quite an important component. Um, you always hear about nature and nurture. Well, um, your nature will depend quite uh, significantly on your ability to perform certain activities. How much you train obviously has a huge impact and there's recent studies to say a lot more to do with the nurturing as opposed to nature. However, if we have the fundamental makeup, uh, then we do stand a better chance. And so let's we're going to look at what sort of difference that's going to have on our bodies, what our makeup is. So the two main functions of the levers with inside our body are to generate muscular effort and to increase the speed of any particular given movement. So we're looking at a really efficient process. Now, there are different components of a lever, and these are simply written here, a lever, the fulcrum, the effort, and the load. They're the general terms that you need to understand when we're talking about them. And here they are in a small diagram. Okay, so let's have a look at each one of those components first of all. So the lever is the bone. This acts as a lever and it's usually a rigid structure which can rotate around a fixed particular point. So think of your, um, um, your radius, your ulna, any different particular bone you want to think of. All right, so this fixed point that we talked about moving around is known as the fulcrum. And in here, we've got the fulcrum, which is in the middle. And the muscles that surround that joint are given, the, the, they, they create the internal forces that allow the movement to actually occur. So when the muscles actually contract, this is known as the effort. And then last but not least, whatever the effort is moving, as long as we've got a large enough force, this is usually known as the load. Now, some of those terms will change slightly, but for, for argument's sake, we'll use those ones in today's breakdown. So, how do we actually apply these components to the body? So, let's have a look at the fulcrum, the effort, and the load. So, the fulcrum is the point that they're moving around, and that's that point there. So, we'll use the joint right there. And then we have the effort. So, the effort is actually the bicep contracting, and it's attached there at that point so we put the effort there and obviously the load is the arm or let's say for example whatever the arm was holding nice and easy for that one there so here's how we would um, we can easily break this down into a table so we've got the levers uh, the location is the bone the diagram we we what we do for the diagram is we draw a line and then for the fulcrum the joint and therefore we draw a triangle the effort, muscular force, and then we have an arrow with an E, and then load is weight, and that's an arrow with an L. So if we're asked to draw a diagram, and that happens a lot in our biomechanics exams, we must use those particular descriptions. And you can see in this one down at the bottom here, so it's got the triangle, it's got the, the arrow, and the E, and the arrow, and the L. Notice the direction that they're going in is very important as well. All right, so that should give us the basis of what we need to understand. So, in this example, the fulcrum is the elbow. We mentioned that, and it's applying the, the force, which is the effort, which is the, uh, the bicep curl, and the load is obviously the apple or the weight. Now, what we also need to understand is there are three different classes so make sure we note that down. Three different classes of levers. Class 1, 2 and 3 keeps it nice and simple for us. And the reason that they change is dependent on where the fulcrum, the load and the effort are going to be. So as you can see here, this one is starting with the E for effort and then the F for fulcrum and then L for load. But the next one is changing. So it's effort, load, then fulcrum. And then for a class 3, you have the fulcrum, effort and then the load. Now, uh, as much as that might seem a little bit confusing, you will get used to them, but it's very important that we recognize the differences between those three different classes of uh, levers. So, one of the ways that you can remember them, if you like, is 
there is, um, it's just for me, so please do play around with your own. He said, there is only one education for life. Two fled and the third fell over. So what that does, it just gives me the order of E, F and L. So education for life is one. Two fled, so that's fulcrum, load and effort. So that's class two. And then for the third is F, E and L, fulcrum, effort and load. And obviously that's the third one there. It's just how I use it. It's entirely up to you what you use, but I think it would be really important to note something like that down, take charge of that, and then you'll be a little bit more confident when you're going into the exams. Now, let's move on quickly and look at the different types of levers and where they are about in our body. So this one here, we have the effort. So it changes, we have the, the load, the fulcrum, and the effort. So that is the education for life so that's a class one lever and we don't have many of these in our body um, but it's one that um, we do need to understand and so we have the um, there's just a diagram to show you how it looks and that as I mentioned before is our class one lever so we're using the fulcrum is the pivot or the atlas and axis which are the bones at the very top there uh, and as I said it's an example of a first class lever so it's the force here of these muscles contracting to draw the neck backwards and let's think of a sporting example you could say a flick on in football that's just one example I can think of there so let's um oh, excuse me right let's um so there's a fulcrum and the effort and the load so let's move on then let's have another look at a um, class of lever so this one here we have the fulcrum at the front where the the movement is rotating around that's recognized as a triangle. The load is the body here. So all of this component here going through that bone, that's where all that load is taking place. And then the effort here is the gastrocnemius and soleus here. So F, L, E. So that will be our second class lever. All right. And there again is an, an easier example for you to have a look at. All right, and then moving on to the next one then. So the fulcrum is the knee joint there. Where's the effort going to be for this one? Okay, let's say, say that this is moving upwards, or even if it was moving downwards, actually. Where's the effort? Okay, hopefully you've identified here. And so there is the effort, and the load, quite obviously, is the foot or the lower leg there. So this is an example of a third-class lever. All right, now we do have mainly third class levers within our body. So we're just gonna have a look at another example here and see how you get on with this one. Okay, so fulcrum obviously at the elbow. The effort is there, is the bicep is, is making this joint contract. And that's there. So therefore the load is here. Or and you can you can obviously include the lower arm as well. All right, so hopefully that makes that pretty clear for you. Just another example there. Okay, so we're going to just look at that third class again there. So let's imply that we've got the, here we go, let's imply that we've got the load. Let's say whatever it is doesn't really matter. And then we've got this point here. We'll have the fulcrum down here. Okay, and then here like so. I think that's sort of it, isn't it? And then we had here. Now, let me just, uh, let's have a look at that. So we've got the fulcrum there. And what you've got to try and remember, even though the bicep is obviously over this side of the fulcrum, the attachment for it is actually here, isn't it? So that, therefore, it's fulcrum. Then the effort is there. Okay, and then obviously we've got the load here up at the end. Okay, so it's F, E, L and therefore it's a third class lever. And that, again, happens a lot in our bodies. So if we just... Let's have a look here. We'll just skip over that one. So let's do the simple bicep curl. There he is with the dumbbell. They, they are with the dumbbell, sorry. So the bicep is actually attaching to that point there. So if we had to put them in order, it's the fulcrum, which is here. And then obviously now we can see that the effort is here. And finally, the load is there. So recognizing the point of the attachment is quite an important part of understanding in relation to your levers. All right, so we'll go back to the, uh, there we go. So now when we put these in, so we have the fulcrum there at the elbow, 
the effort is there and hopefully we've, we've made that clear and then you have the load at the end there like so and this is as mentioned before an example of the third class lever all right so what I want you to do then is just have a play around with some drawings of different parts of the body and see where you can identify different types of levers. For the most part, you're going to come up with third class levers. They're the important ones, but let's not neglect the other two. So just to remember again, if you can, there is only one education for life. And then two fled and the third fell over. If you can think of a better one than that, please do let me know. So what we'll be looking at in our next session is the efficiency of the levers. And we'll be looking at this um, element here, which is called the lever arm. And um, that's our next stage. All right, so thanks very much. Any problems, uh, do contact me via the HPE website. And I'll speak to you soon in part two.